Hi there, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah, and as promised, today I have another new design for you, which I'm actually wearing. Um, this is an excellent uh, origami or convertible um, item, accessory that can be worn in a whole bunch of different ways. And the name of this shawl, wrap, scarf, throw, poncho thing um, is uh, Don't Wait Up. Um, it, uh, it sort of has a long story, but part of the um, reason I called it that um, is that uh, this sequence um, of, you know, texture and different stripes um, I think is very addicting to knit, and I often find myself staying up past my bedtime and um, knitting longer than I should because I just want to get to the next section, and so um, that's part of the reason behind the name. Um, this shawl, if you've been around for a little while, you've seen me kind of talk about hand spun and design and combining colors in interesting ways, and this is the result of all those swatches and experiments, um, some of which I've detailed on the channel before, so I'll link, I'll link to at least one video um, below this one that gives you a little bit more of the backstory. Um, but essentially, I was inspired by a palette um, from the 1960s and 70s that was very popular and seems to be making a comeback now. Um, brocade, tapestry, um, that kind of textile, and wanted to find a way to incorporate that into knitting without making the knitting overly complicated. Um, and so what I settled on was a sequence knit combined with stripes. And so that's what you see here. And you have irregularly spaced stripes on this one. Um, the pattern will give you some tips and hints about how you can customize your stripes and how many stripes you can do um, with the various colors. And so um, you'll be able to customize this a little bit and change the look depending on your personal preferences. Um, now the other thing that's going on, well there's two other things going on with this. One is that the yarn actually shifts color over long sequences, and I'll talk about the yarn more in a minute. And the, the third element to this is it is a sequence knit, and so it repeats in such a way that you get a reversible fabric. So if I turn this inside out, you can see that this kind of texture with the thicker and thinner blips along the stripe is mirrored on this side. And so no matter how you put this on, um, what angle you wear it at, and which sides of the different folds and things are showing, you're going to have a nice looking fabric and you're not going to have to worry about showing the wrong side. Um, that's something that I've been really enjoying and diving into um, in a big way this year with a number of my designs and it's certainly reflected here as well. Um, you'll notice buttons and I will talk about the buttons in just a second. Um, but let me talk about the yarn first. So the, the main body of this sample um, is knit with uh, Green Mountain Spinnery Ragtime, and it's a, like I said, it's a long repeat striping yarn with a barber pole effect. Um, I can show you that a little bit better in an up close, I'm trying to find a colorway that's really doing that barber pole effect, but you can see it here. So here's your ragtime. So um, where I'm knitting on the skein now, you had sort of um, a darker orange and a pink together, and then eventually that darker orange is fading into a lighter orange and you still have pink here. Um, this particular skein is very colorful, and so you can see how the long color changes progress through this one. Um, some of their colors are not as dramatic. Um, this particular colorway is uh, more subtle and more moody, um, but you still get those long, uh, long um, ranges of color, or long runs of color. And you do have a, a nice choice of palette here. Um, so this one is, you know, grays with different shades of blue in it. Um, so you have a lot of freedom when it comes to um, choosing your colors for this. I think it looks best with some contrast so that you can see the stripes. Um, and so for my sample, um, this one is going, the one I'm wearing is going back to Green Mountain Spinnery. And for this one I chose three colors of ragtime. They are Waller, which is this purple and blue color. 
Coltrane, which is the, the kind of acid green and yellow colorway, and Thelonious, which has a lot of red in it and also some purple. Um, and then they're accented by two colors of their music line. Um, I should say all of this yarn is a DK weight. So the ragtime is a DK and then the music is a DK, but the music is um, a solid heather. So here's what it looks like in the ball. And then knit up, you'll see it does not change color. This light green is the same color. And then the purple is also exactly the same color. It's not changing. Um, it do, these colors do look different on the fabric as you switch colors with the background. So, you know, this purple stripe here, it looks a little different than these purple stripes down here, but they're, they're actually the same tone. Um, so that's one way to knit this shawl. Um, the other way to knit it is to use four um, skeins of the ragtime instead of three and then a solid. Um, and I am actually working, I've just cast on my own, um, you know, my own version of this shawl that I'm going to keep. And I've chosen four skeins of the ragtime again. And I can show you them all together here. <laughs> Pick all those up. So there they are together. And you can see that the, the three over here um, all are rather dark, and that's intentional on my part because I wanted to have just one that was a contrast, so that's this one over here. Um, but the other four are fairly deep in tone. Um, but you could go the other way. You could choose three light ones and then choose it one dark for your contrast. Um, and these will all be in the pattern notes, but I'll just tell you really quickly. So this is Joplin. Um, this is Bessie, obviously all named for jazz musicians. Uh, this is Waller again, the purple. And this brightly colored one is Jelly Roll for Jelly Roll Morton. Um, and this lighter color is the one that's going to be striping across the entire shawl. So on the one I'm wearing, you can see I chose two solids. On the one I'm making, I'm just going to use the jelly roll and let it do all the work of these contrasting stripes all the way down. And again, I'll vary the density of the stripes as I go. Um, so I hope uh, that you will, you know, take a look at this pattern and give it a try. Um, there are a bunch of different ways that you can wear it. You can wear it as a very large scarf. Um, it is a large uh, piece of fabric. You're actually built, uh, knitting a large um, parallelogram, so it's not a rectangle. Um, it does have points on the ends, um, but it, it wears like a rectangle. It stays on your body well. Um, I find triangular shawls get kind of heavy in the back at the point, and they're hard to keep on. This one, I wanted to, to make it easy to style multiple ways and to stay on your body. Um, so you can wear it as a scarf. You can wear it just as a wrap over your shoulders, like I'm doing here. Um, and then, of course, you can use the buttons. And um, what you're going to do is just put buttons down one of the shorter edges. I have eight buttons on here. You could use more or less. And you want sort of toggle-style buttons. These are ones that I modified. Um, but toggle-style buttons are long, skinny buttons so that you can get them through the fabric. And there's no specific place that you have to attach the buttons. You're, you can experiment and fold the fabric in different ways because um, this is knitted at a fairly loose gauge. And so what you can do is just slide the button right through at any point in the fabric and then make a loop. Um, you probably always wanna make a loop that's larger than just a finger, but make a loop that you could stick your head through, stick an arm through, um, and that will allow you to wear this, um, like I said in the beginning, as a scarf, as a wrap, as a, a poncho, um, you know, over your head. Um, you could even wrap it pretty tightly around your head and still have enough fabric to kind of cover your cowl area. So it can be um, like a little red riding hood type of hood, you know, or a little capelet. Lots of options for styling this. And that's what I wanted to do also with this is just make it as versatile as possible. Um, because the yarn is um, spun in a woolen 
method. Um, it's very light and very bouncy. And so for the yardage and for the amount of um, yarn that you're using, you get quite a lightweight item that is quite big. Um, so it's almost, I mean, it would be big enough to knit this and give it as a baby blanket um, and have the parent, you know, swaddle the kid and then button it up. Um, that would be another option, I guess, for this. Um, so, you know, that's how large this is. And I like that because um, even though it is very big, it's not very bulky and it's not very heavy. And so you could put this on in a way and then still get, you know, your winter coat on over top of it if you wanted to. Um, so like I said, I hope you will give this a try. I hope uh, that you will play around with your color choices. Um, one tip I always have for, for doing stripes or color work is to take a picture of all your yarns together, turn that into a black and white image, and then make sure you have some contrast um, so that you can see your pattern. Um, but it, like I said, it is a very meditative knit, and once you get going, um, it's, it's incre incredibly simple. It's just a two-row repeat. And so, you know, I think this would also be great travel knitting or great TV knitting or great, you know, craft night knitting with your friends. Um, it's still something that you can, you know, have a conversation and be enjoying other people's company and not have to sit and concentrate too, too hard on. And um, Green Mountain Spinnery will be at uh, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival coming up this weekend. And so if you happen to be there, you'll be able to um, see their all their ragtime colors in person and choose your palette um, for this design. Like I said, it does either take four skeins of ragtime or three skeins of ragtime and two skeins of the music, which is the solid stripe. So thanks again for tuning in. Happy knitting. And if you do um, decide to make this pattern, please tag us on Gage Hill Crafts uh, on social media and we would love to see, um, see your results. Thanks a lot.